The process of unionizing workers may begin in one of two primary ways. A union targets an industry, a region, or a company, or employees request union representation. Like other entities seeking members, a union usually mounts a systematic campaign to persuade individuals to join. As would be expected, employers respond to unionization efforts by taking various steps to oppose them. A union authorization card is signed by employees to designate a union as their collective bargaining agent. At least 30% of employees in the targeted group must sign authorization cards before a representation election can be scheduled. An election to determine if a union will represent the employees is supervised by the NLRB for private sector organizations and by other agencies for public sector organizations. If two unions are attempting to represent employees, the employees will have three choices, Union A, Union B, or no union. Before any election, the appropriate bargaining unit must be determined. A bargaining unit is comprised of all employees eligible to select a single union to represent and bargain collectively for them. If management and the union do not agree on who is and who is not included in the unit, the regional office of the NLRB will make the determination. A major criterion in deciding the composition of a bargaining unit is what the NLRB calls community of interest. Employees who constitute a bargaining unit will have mutual interests in the following wages, hours, and working conditions, traditional industry groupings for bargaining purposes, physical location and amount of interaction and working relationships between employee groups, and supervision by similar levels of management. The Taft-Hartley Act excludes supervisors from voting for or joining unions. As a result, supervisors cannot be included in bargaining units for unionization purposes, except in industries covered by the NLRA. But who qualifies as a supervisor is not always clear. The NLRB expanded its definition to classify a supervisor as any individual with the authority to hire, transfer, discharge, discipline, and use independent judgment with employees. Numerous NLRB and court rulings have been issued regarding supervisory designation in various situations. A major case decided by the U.S. Supreme Court found that charge nurses with RN degrees were supervisors because they exercised independent judgment. This case and others have provided employers and unions with some guidance about who should be considered supervisors and thus excluded from bargaining units. Employers and unions engage in many activities before an election. Both the Wagner Act and the Taft-Hartley Act place restrictions on these activities. Once unionizing efforts begin, all activities must conform to the requirements established by applicable labor law. Both management and the union must adhere to these requirements, or the results of the effort can be appealed to the NLRB and overturned. Official certification of a union as a legal representative for designated private sector employers is given by the NLRB, and for public sector employees is given by an equivalent body. Once certified, the union attempts to negotiate a contract with the employer. The employer must bargain, Refusing to bargain with a certified union constitutes an unfair labor practice. If members no longer wish to be represented by a union, they can use the election process to sever the relationship between themselves and the union. Similar to the unionization process, decertification is a process whereby a union is removed as a representative of a group of employees. Employees attempting to oust a union must obtain decertification authorization cards signed by at least 30% of employees in the bargaining unit before an election may be held. If a majority of those voting in the election vote to remove the union, the decertification effort succeeds. Employers can take numerous actions to prevent unionization. All managers and supervisors must adhere to NLRB and other requirements to avoid unfair labor practices.